G-I-S-B-E-R-T. <coughs> the second guy, he was a computer guru at the time. He was in charge of the guidance system and the missile. The most important responsibility for the first guy was electricity. On the missile. I'm ready. Physically and mentally. Yeah. <laughs> Who could give the order to launch the missile? The president. Some of you may recall when he went overseas, <clears throat> there was always some kind of an officer running behind him with a briefcase that was called the football, and that contained the message. Mm -hmm. The message was finally piped in here from 2nd Omaha, Nebraska at the 15th Air Force Base in California. Two totally different locations in case one location was already wiped out. Mm -hmm. Started with a huge warbling noise, followed by Alpha and American code, sounded similar to this one here. Thirty-four letters and numbers came across. The uh, officers immediately took their emergency action message book and wrote down the Alpha numeric code as it came. And then they repeated this, and then they exchanged those books and read each other's notification. If they agreed that they were identical, uh, they were authorized to open this Evo safe. <coughs> uh -huh. In there is something which looks like a deck of cards, similar to this one here. The first two letters identified a specific card. They opened the card inside as another cookie with five digits. That had to be identical with the second part of this message. If this was the case, they knew they had an authentic message from the president. Then they took out two keys. One for the uh, officer, one for the commander, inserting it over here, mm -hmm. and one for the deputy, inserting it over here. As you can see, they're too far apart for one person to do it at the same time. Mm -hmm. They were spring-loaded to the wrong position. They, <laughs> they had to be turned <laughs> within two seconds, yeah. and they had to be held for five seconds. Okay. You give the countdown, and you say, three, two, one, launch. Yeah. And when you see launch, you turn it to the right and hold it for five seconds. Okay. Can okay. I do the same thing? All, all right. right. Say, okay. okay. Are you ready, guys? How to, how to <laughs> launch <laughs> 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 a two missile. Three. Two, one, launch. One, three, two, one. Excellent. Thank you very much. You must have done this before. You do this <laughs> in airline every day. <laughs> you started Thank something you. which cannot be stopped. Uh -huh. There is no way to communicate with this missile anymore. The missile was gone. We didn't have the oh, technology goodness. to communicate with this missile. Yeah. If we would have had the technology, the Soviets would have figured it out and you don't want this baby coming back at you. Mm -hmm. And there's no OOPS button here. Launch enabled. The batteries on the missile are force-fed with electrolytes and gradually the closure door is going to open. And when it breaks the radar system, the alarm goes on down here in the control center. Guidance system go, last handshake between MacGag and the missile. The missile knew where to go, how to get there, mm -hmm. and what to do once it got there. The, um, it took us 58 seconds from turning the key until liftoff. And now, mm -hmm. after 35 minutes, 6,500 miles down the road, target number two would cease to exist. There are two things left for you to do. <laughs> Quench the fire in the silo and uh -huh. close the closure door. Uh -huh. Your last order was wait for further order. Uh -huh. If you got a further order, you were very happy because you knew somebody was so alive. still alive, yeah. yeah. If you didn't get this order, you had two choices. You could go down next level, go through a tunnel, try to climb through the fresh air intake. If you would have done this, most probably you would have seen a world you had never seen before, devastated with radioactivity. Yeah. Or you could sit here and suffocate. After about 20 days, you were running out of food and recirculated air. This decision never had to be done. The system did exactly what it was supposed to do. It did nothing. Those guys were sitting here for more than 20 years waiting for order to come. The order never came. Peace through the turret worked. Yeah. It kept the peace for more than 20 years. Yeah. Each side realized you cannot win a nuclear war.
mutually assured destruction, MAD, a mad scenario. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Nine levels. There is one level of buffers and there are seven levels below us, all filled with shock isolated equipment. This door was always closed because behind it there was a refrigerated environment. Temperature had to be kept at what level? 16. Fahrenheit. Uh -huh. Inside this silo, you have those hydraulically retractable working platforms. So if you had to do some work on the outside of the missile, all of those platforms are lowered and you could walk out there and do some job on the outside. So let's go over here. There are two more windows cut in here. Missiles were built in Denver, Colorado by the Martin Marinette Company. This one here was special. This was number 10 from the production line. This missile never had propellants on board and therefore can safely be used for a museum of this time. Mm -hmm. The first 12 missiles were used for the Gemini, Gemini program. Yeah. Remember Neil Armstrong, yeah. first guy on the moon? Yeah. When he took his first flight into space, he was sitting on top of the Titan II. So where are you from? Illinois.